Hey everybody, it's Code Baromical, and welcome back to more Kodelka. Last time, we... What, what did we do? Oh yeah, we, re we reunited back again with James and Edward. And finally delivered Bonus and Big Nuts doll, and we got to Patrick's mansion with the blue key. Also, we met that monk named Bacon. So yeah, so this time around, we're gonna be going to face that gargoyle. I did check this, uh... On my spare time, walk all the way back here. Had to walk again twice for this recording session. So now we are able to go this way because apparently what our this thing was here that was blocking our path back is now out of the way. So yeah, and here's Ogden and uh, well the caretakers I guess. Oh, I can check this guy. Romance nuts. Okay, I'll take it. Can I not do anything else? Nope. Okay. But before we go uh, face the gargoyle, I want to go back this way, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I did also level up uh, along the way, I think just by one level only, for each character. And I just increased their vitality by a lot. Well anyways, before we go face the gargoyle, I did find an item back here that is now right here, or maybe I missed it <laughs> uh, previously, I do not know really, but... Oh wait, ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay. Let's go over this way. And right here, there is something right here right now. We have a pendant. I don't know what this is, but yeah. Pick it up. You got pendant. And there it goes. Also, this fountain is no longer available after uh, we turn... Well, I we put all the icons on the statues, apparently, so... If you wanna heal, you gotta go all the way down to where we fought that boss with Kodalka by herself. So, yeah. So, let me check this thing here. We got the pendant. What does that do? It increases luck. Let me see, uh... Items, tools... I want to, uh, check... What else it says. Examine. Pendant uh, with strong mystic power given to Kodalka when she was drunk by a gift. Wait, why is this here then? This is from, from Kodalka. Why is it here? Huh. Well, let's give it to Kodalka, I guess. Fire J ring. Goodbye. I gotta lose a lot on my other stats, but. Yeah, actually, no, I only just lose a few pie. But my luck goes up by 15. That is crazy. And I have no armor either. And let's see, uh, what, what about this sword? Galahad sword. Let me see. Galahad sword, here we go. No, it's not that good. Well, maybe it is, but I got a better sword for James. Well, anyways, let us go face the gargoyle. And hopefully not die, because... <laughs> I don't know if we can die here. Well, obviously I know we can die. It will be interesting interesting to see a game over for this game. Because, I'll be honest with you, I have not been having that much trouble with the enemies around here, really. So, let us go face the gargoyle. Uh, okay, there's a gargoyle inside. Maybe if the three of you work together, you can defeat it. There's a gargoyle inside, do you still want to enter? Yes! <laughs> this might be a bad idea. Let's make a temporary safe right here. Okay. I, I, I think I'm more than ready, more than prepared for this optional fight. I think it's an optional fight, and if it's a story fight, I don't know. But this seems like it, it will be an optional thing. And now we're gonna go and see the gargoyle. Where is that gargoyle? Huh. As you try to proceed, a gargoyle suddenly attacks you. There we go. Let's go with this optional boss fight. What could be behind that there that he's protecting so badly? There's gotta be something in there. Uh, oh, 4,549. Dude. 
Are you kidding me? You have gotta be kidding me. <laughs> James already dead. No way. Okay, I don't think I can do this fight here. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. James got instantly killed. And he's the mini tank. Wow. I cannot believe that. Man, I don't think we're gonna be able to win this fight. 61 damage only, wow. I have a bad feeling about this, guys. Uh, James, attack it, I guess. Zero damage. Wow. I mean... What can I do, really? Man, 4,000 damage each time? Yeah, I don't think we can win this fight. Wow, zero damage too. Yeah, uh, you know what? I think I gotta let him kill me as to see the game over screen. Oh, what he doing is spinning around. He's like, you can't hurt me. I know I can't hurt you, Mr. Gargoyle. <laughs> I guess we're not gonna be doing this anytime soon. There it goes. 4,000 damage. Wow, man. Guess we cannot do this fight yet. Game over. Well, I should expect that as much. I, it, it was like an optional boss. I guess I, I guess I'll have to come back here when I'm stronger. Okay, guys, I made my way back all the way back here, back to Patrick's mansion. So since we cannot beat the gargoyle, I'm gonna be having to be finding some extra fights along the way here. So I know a lot of you guys probably don't want to see random fights here, but. I don't think I have a choice. I think I might have to be like level 50 or something to be that gargoyle. But for now, we got some shotgun shells. Actually, I did get a shotgun. I should probably try it out a little bit, I guess. Is that, that's a door? I thought that was a, something else. Okay, I'll, I'll go through that through there in a moment. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and explore a little bit around this way first, if I can. It seems like a suspicious spot over here. It's bolted. They want to throw the back the bolt. Uh, sure. Bolt has been thrown back. Inner grounds, Patrick's. Oh, we're over here. Okay, I guess it's a shortcut back over here. I didn't have to walk all the way that way. Uh, fine then, fine. <laughs> I guess I did not have to walk all the way over there. So why is uh wait this mechanism right there or it look like steps up that way but i do not know i definitely have to do some fights here guys i'll try to upgrade my spells as well along the way but it is hard to well do i guess don't worry kodoka has plenty of hp to survive a hit from those things at least this time around really Last time was a lot more harder. Oh, I. Oh, I got my game crashed there. Woo! That'll be quite terrible. I hadn't saved yet. I probably should make a temporary save right here. Let me do exactly that. Don't want anything bad to happen. I don't want to walk all the way back here. Because my last save, temporary save, was at the gargoyle. Let's see, Edward, you can get more HP. Actually, take one out and get two more damage. There you go. James, you're gonna be having to get a lot more HP for the Gargoyle fight. You are our main uh, tank of the party, so you're gonna have to be focusing on that for now. So let me make a temporary save right here. Save. Here we go. Nicely done. 
Temporary safe, overwrite. Yeah. We're gonna have to be higher level for that gargoyle, guys. Anyways. Let's go check this here first, this, since I had to climb up here. One step for Kodelka. Nope, nope, don't go back. Go up this way. No, nope, not again. Ugh. Okay, climb up. There we go. Okay, uh, Kodelka. Hey, someone's opening doors around here. Okay, what's over here? Open door. Whoa. This place looks nice and cool. Bogan arrow. How is I even supposed that to know that was there? Anyways, there's something over there. It looks like you can move the statue if you try. Uh, sure. What did that do? Did that do something? It turned off the lights, right? Huh. It sounds hollow when you hit it. There must be a hidden door in this wall. Huh. There's a lot of puzzle in here. I'll come back to this room in a moment. It's bolted. Okay, I guess it goes all the way back here again. Yep, it does. But what does that statue even do? Anyways, what's through this door? Okay, we need to fight a boss somewhere. Okay, let me move this statue again. And I guess it opens this door here. I guess assume it does that. Yep, it opens this door here. You found Roger's bacon inside the secret library. Roger Bacon. It's around here somewhere. Well, what took you so long? Roger, I have a monkey in the coffin. Since when have you two been acquainted? I am no mummy. My name is Roger Bacon, and I'm just like any normal old man. Hey, I've been around for 20 years, and I have yet to run across an old man as abnormal as yourself. I see. Well, I've been around for 600 years, and I've seen plenty of abnormal people just like myself. My dear old man. Might you be related to the great warlock, Roger Bacon, who made such a name for himself in the 13th century? <sighs> you are very knowledgeable! Hmm. I am that warlock, Roger Bacon, you speak of. You mean to tell me that you were born in 1210 and have remained alive and well until the present date of 1898? Actually, to be precise, I was born in 1214. Kudelka. What type of a joke is this? That's my question. Well, this is no joke! I am the reputable Roger Bacon! Very well then. If you were truly that Roger Bacon, then you'll be able to tell me with whom and where you studied. Oh, that's easy. I entered Oxford in 1247 and studied under the tutelage of Robert Grosteste. Although a good professor, I would not consider him to be a wise man. I penned my masterpiece, Opus Maius, as well as numerous other books on natural science. Being a visionary pioneer? Hmm. I must say that my work has influenced generations of work that followed. But alas, in hindsight, that work pales in comparison to the work I did copying the immigre document for the Pope. The immigre documents? I figured you would know about that book. Of course. It took me five years to copy the book in its entirety. I know everything there is to know about the book. What is it about? Oh, is it, it unravels the secrets of life that expand far beyond the largest field. It speaks of the secret rituals conducted by the ancient race of Fomors on immortality. The Fomors would claim the lives of the resurrected as their own. They reversed the laws of nature and the cycle of life. When the Druids took over the Celts, Alexander the Great penned the emigre documents in Greek for placement in the great library. Resurrecting the dead. Oh, it is true. The document has long been considered the most dangerous work of literature. 
It was safely guarded in the caverns of the Supreme Pontiff's quarters. But apparently, the book was not able to withstand the wares of time over generations. And the Pope decreed that a new edition be created by copying the full text. That is where I came in. The Pope requested that I copy the book word for word. And when the work was finished, apparently, I was supposed to be killed. <laughs> but I am not one to be dealt with so carelessly. I secretly escaped, and eventually I made my way to the sacred land referred to in the text of the immigre document. <laughs> and the secret rituals? Uh, don't tell me. You need look no further than myself. And you succeeded. Hmm. Though I cannot perform the same on others, yes, I have been able to escape the hands of death. But I have not been able to escape the roots of existence, which are the seeds of change. My body is not immune to change, as you can see by my hideous appearance. Hmm. I've had nothing to do other than roam the earth for the last 300 years. I've seen all I can take of mankind's cruelty. So, I returned here for some rest. <laughs> well, um, enough of this gossip. I've got some research to do. <laughs> May I ask to be left alone? Man, he's 600 years old. He was from the 1200s. And now he's in the 1800s. Well, almost 1900s as well. But that's a long time, really. But also, he knows about the emigrate document and how to utilize it. And everything about it, really. But man, man, imagine living for 600 years. I, I, right now, I, I, people think immortality is something awesome. And who knows, maybe it, it is for a few years, but in reality, knowing that you can never die is kinda, kinda scary, really. Because you cannot uh, pass on, seriously. So yeah. Like, I know I saw a movie that was just like that a long time ago. Where a family found a a tree that had water that granted them immortality. And they couldn't die or age at all, really. If, even though, yes, you have like... Even, even though you have eternal life as an immortal and you will never get bored because, well, new things get made. But for me, like, it would be kind of a nightmare, really, seeing all your friends and loved ones pass away except you. That is kind of horrible, really. But anyway, these enemies here are quite strong, so I am actually hoping that they actually give me enough, uh, enough, um, experience by the end of this uh, exploration of the mansion. We might actually be able to finish this. But these enemies are pretty strong indeed, really. And I cannot kill this thing with my magic, so I'll just punch it. Here you go, get punched by Kodelka's eyeball. Uh. Get out of here, you musketeer. Action, shoot this thing. Pow! There we go. Double shots. Goodbye. But anyways... What can I do right now is the question. Bonus... More HP. We'll put one there. And we'll put... Uh, I really do not know what luck does yet, so I'll, I'll try to get to level 50. Just to see. Edward keeps losing HP, so I'm not gonna even bother giving him any more uh, 
HP for now. I got an RB sword. Anyways, is there something around here that I can check? I don't think so. I think it was only for a cutscene right there with Roger Bacon. But aside from that... Let's see. I'm pretty sure this door does not open because of that. Right? Yep. Mysterious force blocks the door. Let's go find ourselves a boss. So, let's see. Let's go this way. And proceed through this secret door that looks like a mechanical door. So cool. I like those door designs that have like gears on them. It just looks so cool. What's this? You found a gramophone, but it can't be played as there's no disc inside. This in the gramophone. Okay. The disc begins to play, filling the room with a melody. You found a hidden drawer. Inside it is a book titled Research Notes. Oh boy. More reading. Well, this is good timing for this. Let's go ahead and read it. Research Notes. Ahem. <clears throat> September 10, 1895. Rain. With the monastery renovation completed, I have finally moved in with Ogden and Bessie. Wait, wait, is that really it? Oh, no, okay, sorry. It's been a long road since I first procured the emigre file. Even after referencing literature of all ages, the rendering of the text still remains a difficult task, though it has been four years since I first laid eyes on it. Never once has its enigma left the, recess, left the recesses of my mind. Containing it are countless descriptions of the source of the energy that is the secret to life existence. The Druid's cryptic experiments taken from the ancient Celts and recorded by Alexander the Great hundreds of years before Christ. Branded a forbidden enterprise, it was kept hidden by the Vatican's cardinals in the depths of the Pope's quarters for a very long time. And now, I have it in my hands. I have reached Wales, the land referred to in the text. I will fulfill my wife Elaine's resurrection at this monastery, built by St. Daniel Scottis. Of course, I am aware that my act could prove insolent in the eyes of the Lord, and however, people may censor, wait, censure my action. The love I have for my wife will never cease. I ask of you, Lord, to turn your eyes away for a short while. November 16, 1895, Rain The more I learn about this monastery, the more eerie the structure appears to me. Ogden mentioned that the hospice had been full of corpses at one time a few hundred years ago, and I have become aware of an oppressing sense of moral sin as I walk through the underground passageway. I can feel haunting spirits everywhere. But according to the emigre file, the power of such resentful spirits are considered the driving force behind reviving the Driss cryptic experiments. I plan to fulfill this place while well, I plan to fill this place with the all-consuming eerie of these spirits. Even though I may burn in hell for these sins, if Elaine can be brought back to life, I shall have no regrets. I mean, it's easier to just wait your time and then just pass away and meet up with Elaine in the afterlife instead of bring her back to life and then you're going to, well, burn, I guess. I, I would rather wait. December 5th, 1895, Rain. I found out that the cauldron hidden in the basement held the key to the secret, even though the book had mentioned it. The well-positioned trick door kept us from locating its whereabouts. The cauldron looks as if it is made of gold. But upon closer examination, the surface is so old that one cannot determine how long it has been in existence. I would guess that it is a prehistoric artifact made a few thousand or maybe even tens of thousands of years ago and left to sit. We must quickly set up an altar and begin preparation for our ceremony. December 16, 1895. Rain. I ordered Ogden to acquire some livestock. 320 chickens and 43 pigs were purchased through a supplier in town. I arranged for ground transportation, but the fog did not help expedite the undertaking. I expect to be busy as soon as the delivery arrives. Animal offerings are an integral part of the drill experiments. The cauldron must be filled with the freshest blood and flesh. This is where it begins. February 24, 1896. Rain. The third experiment. Still no response. Even though I followed directions and offered the proper prayers, there's no signs of the spirit gaining any strength. I must return to the book and re and reread some parts since I cannot proceed if there has been 
some misunderstanding of the text. Is there a problem with the way I conducted the experiment? Or are the offerings insufficient? Regardless, I need to think this over. Even though I may arrive at a terrifying realization, it is too late to fear anything now. I have come too far to be impeded by fear. I'm sure Ogden will understand. 1896, well, March 19, 1896. Rain. Return from London. The specially ordered carriage seemed to be working very well. I had trapped three women in the baskets in the back. I lured some victims out of an alley in the east end, had them sniff some chemical and pulled them into the carriage. But since I was not used to my new role as an abductor, I took more time than I had planned. I could not have done this without Ogden's help. I am deeply grateful to him. So they kidnapped people then to kill them. I am still at a loss. I cannot make up, any, make up my mind. Even if I can bring Elaine back to life, are my actions forgivable? I balked when presented with this dilemma. Bessie has been taking care of the women I had kidnapped. It's better than them freezing some corner of London. I hope this small gesture of kindness will be considered as a priori act of repentance. I wonder if my small kindness will have any significance when held up to the horrendous act I'm about to commit. March 31st, 1896. I must make up my I must make up my mind. I must. Storm. Dear Lord, I have without a doubt committed a crime no human should have committed. I conducted the dread experiment using the flesh and blood of the victims. I sensed the incredible energy of the spirit culminate into one when I poured the woman's remains into the cauldron. As I had thought before, it is human flesh that needs to be offered up to fully re release the effect of, of the procedures. What a frightening, arcane process this is. The sounds of fury in the woman's death screams have not left my ears, but I must go on. There is no turning back now. Rain. Once again, I performed the procedures. I once again round up four victims from London. Even though they are all old with barely a thing to live for, when I contemplate taking their lives, it leaves me sick to my stomach. Oh, ah, no, oh, no, oh, no, I press, ah, oh, wait, ah, oh, where is it? I pressed the X by accident. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm in 1896, wait a moment. Ah, uh, where was it, where was it? Uh, Okay, a little bit further. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, where is it? A little bit more. Uh, okay, here we go. It may be due to my doubts that the spirits did not rise to such a powerful strength as before. I may have to use a younger, more vibrant source of energy. The book says to fill the cauldron with energy of hunted spirits. I wonder how many victims the cauldron must swallow to be satisfied. June 5th, 1896. I do not have enough victims. The saintly presence of Daniel Scottis inhibits us from claiming authorita authorita authoritative power. I have concluded that it would be necessary for us to offer many more lives before we are finished here. I have since found 35 more victims for 7 separate experiments, but the spirits have not responded with much strength for me to accomplish the resurrection. I am in dire need of the culminated strength of the spirits. I must come up with a way. I must come up with a more efficient way to proceed. To procure my victims. I finally decided the first shipment of my victims. Ogden was right when he suggested, suggested that we should offer the lord of the slave trade an enormous amount of money for this matter. He has no compassion for human life. The victims are not getting much information and arrive at the monastery expecting a routine night's nice work. It is not necessary for us to go hunting for prey in town. We have few sugar coated lies. There are plenty of people that, that climb right into the carriage. There is no time that will dare speak of what is to become of them. 1896, September 9. Pour the remains in the, into the cauldron. The energy levels in the cauldron have clearly increased, which makes me happy, since it proves that I am heading in the right direction. It seems that lately, I have become more efficient at performing the tasks required for the procedures. However, Ogden and I cannot expect to become much more productive as it is impossible for us to hire help, since we must keep this matter purely clandestine. I decided to place an order for a laboratory table for, from an equipment manufacturer in Manchester. It will take about a month to make, but once we receive this, we will be able to manage mo many more experiments. October 3rd, 1896. Butcher three bodies since morning. After lunch, we made repairs to the bell towers of the main church. After dinner with Bessie and Ogden, I butchered three more bodies. The lab table has pro proven its worth. The spirit has certainly increased in strength. At this rate, I may finish preparing for Elaine's resurrection before All Saints Day. 
Six body butcher in the morning, five in the afternoon, one after dinner. How have I been awaiting this day? The day to conduct Elaine's resurrection ceremony has finally arrived. The cauldron is brim brimming with the remains of my victims. This monastery is now consumed by the energy of the preternatural spirit. Even a saint could not hold his ground against the powerful energy of these hex spirits. I took Elaine's body which had been preserving chemicals for this very day and placed it on the altar and then began reciting the ceremonial chant. Elaine, you are still as beautiful as ever. I love you so much. Please forgive me for calling you back from the land of the dead. What is going on? I have lost all hope. All my efforts and dreams have been only an illusion. The tree, the tree of life that grew upward out of the corpse as if wrapping Elaine's body was certainly the manifestation of the druid's cryptic experiments that I had been seeking. If God is capable of creating beings out of nothingness, then this indeed is a man-made example of his work. But to my horror, the image of my, of my resurrected wife displayed in a flower petal looked just as she did before, yet it lacked a human soul. Indeed, it was a monster. Dear God, is this the punishment you have chosen for me? What have I accomplished by victimizing nearly 200 innocent people? My only hope in life lay in believing that resurrection was possible and dreaming of the day when my wife Elaine would join me here in life on earth once again. Now I have nothing but a cauldron full of blood and hex spirits and a soulless monster. Is this the end that has been awaiting me? Dear Lord, have you no mercy? I only have one path left to follow. I have lost too much. I cannot even find words to apologize to Ogden who has lent me his strength along the way. Now. I only long to sleep in peace with my wife. And that's the end of the research notes. Wow, that is a lot. Well, anyways, we still got a few more minutes before this recording ends. So, we finally know what Patrick did this last couple of years. He was butchering people to revive his wife, uh, Elaine. Which I thought it was, well, pretty obvious from the beginning when we learned about the emigrate document. So yeah, let's go ahead and fight the boss in this room. Let's see, what's this here? This looks like something important right there. Anyways, is this a door? No, okay. Let's go face the boss right here. Uh, climb up. There we go. What are we facing here? Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> Just like a pile of limbs stuck together. Oh boy. Okay, it, it didn't do nothing that much yet, so... Let us start with Geyser. Whoop! Action, attack. And pow pow! Oh, I miss. Oh well. That's, well, I didn't mess, I did a little damage, is the thing. Here we go. Whoop. Pop. Oh, okay. It is immune to Geyser. So, just wait here, Kodoka. Action. Uh, magic. Let's try, uh... Let's fortify strength here for myself. Just so James can do a little bit more extra damage. Whoa. What is that? 493. Not bad. James can take those hits. James is a matter of tankiness. 3 AP only, really. Huh. Sometimes I don't know if that really is worth using at all, really. Anyways, action, attack. Pow pow! I'm, doing, I'm only doing just one damage, really. Uh, let's see, uh, wait. Action, uh, magic. Let's try tornado. We need to find this monster's weakness before it kills us, because, well... I already got one game over, but that was from the optional super boss. Which I'm still too weak to handle. Come, monster, face me. Actually, let's try giving uh, Edward the uh, pistol or the bow gun. Let's try the bow gun. 
Can we see? Where's the bow gun? Here you go. Bow gun. Wait. We have not tried this thing at all yet, so. It could be actually quite fun. I also got the shotgun too, which I should probably try as well. But this monster just wants to keep dancing in front of me. Action bow gun, let's see. Okay, that did a lot more better. It's one ammunition per turn, but yeah. Magic, let's try Megalith. I, I'm pretty sure this boss has like 5,000 HP or so. Probably, or maybe 8,000. Who knows? Not me, because I do not know. Anyway, action attack. Ooh. Ooh, that did not do that much damage, really. Anyway, wait. Action. Items. Reload the bowgun arrow. Wait. I have a feeling this is gonna be a long boss fight. Action, attack. What? A thousand damage this time. Nice. Here you go. Action, magic. Uh, let's try flare this time. Flare level 2. I call upon the fiery pits of the underworld, I guess. Boom. Let's see. Wait. Going for another magic spell. Ow. Yeah, James, since you're not, not gonna do that much damage. I'll have you heal yourself, really. Item. Actually, no, I cannot. Oh, God. Okay, wait. Let's reload the bow gun. Uh, wait right here. Action, attack. Boom! It's not dead yet. Uh, wait. Uh, action. I cannot use spells yet, so. Attack it. Ugh. And I am gonna heal, uh, James. I can have James dying on me, really. It will be horrible. Let's see. Action. Magic. No, not flare. Action. Magic. And heal. Here you go, James. I call the healing upon you, my friend. 2000 HP. That's better than nothing, really. Okay, let's see. Wait. Action. Let's uh, reload my gun. Actually, let's sw swap weapons here. Let's put my pistol back. It's gonna take a little while all the time right, like this, so... Where's my double action pistol? Here we go. Double action pistol. Wait. Action. Attack. Uh, I guess I could just go for the bow gun, really. Oh well. That is fine. We're trying some new items around here, really. And what better thing to use it on than the boss? So let's see. Uh, action. Attack again. There we go. 297. Wait. Kodoka. Magic. Flare. Let's see this time around. Action. Items. I mean, let's put the bow gun back. Bow gun, where are you? Where was it? Here we go. Bow gun. Wait. Burn this monstrosity. 2000 damage is dead. Very well done. Give me lots of experience points. At least I know the bow gun can be used against bosses. It does a lot of damage. But having to reload every single turn it is kind of annoying, really. Two lux and two intellect. Oh, again? Okay, that's very nice for me then. I'll put, uh, wait, no, let's put more HP. 2916. Edward is not losing, uh, HP this time around, so. I could possibly put that there, actually. Hmm. Huh. 
And let's put it there, why not? For for uh James, let's give him more uh He definitely needs to get more intellect in the future, really. Let's give him some intellect. There you go, four in intellect, that's eight. So there we go, very nice. Automatic pistol. What? That looks that sounds amazing. Let me check that out. Automatic pistol. Uh, Kodoka, there we go. Bogan, uh, wait, let me, where is it? Automatic pistol. Galahad sword, air B sword. Where is it? Automatic pistol. Oh man, that looks, that takes away a lot of my strength, really. I didn't know that, that's the Bogan strength, actually. Uh, hmm. Vitality goes down. Huh. I definitely want to try the shotgun, really. Let's try the shotgun, really. I don't have no armor for this guy yet, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, make a save here. We can explore a little bit, I guess. And then I'll come back here and save again, just in case. We still got a few minutes, I guess. We can uh, do something, I guess. Hmm. What could I possibly do? Like, should I level up off screen right now or maybe on our time? I don't know. What's this here? This does not activate yet. Nothing this way. Huh. I thought there would be something happening. So this is Elaine. Yes. She's the one I had the psychic vision of. Do you doubt it? No, indeed. Good. Let's begin. It's been a long time indeed, Mr. O'Flaherty. Oh, Elaine, is that really you? Yes, it is. It is such a pity that we meet again, and I can only present myself to you in this form. This is the woman that responded to my voice, is it not? Thank you for doing this for someone like myself. Elaine, I haven't yet come to terms. Please tell me how this happened to you. Of course I will explain. James, 18 years ago, I was murdered by some thieves that broke into my home. I was helpless. Both Patrick and Ogden were out on business. There was nothing that anyone could do. I will not accept this. This should not have happened. Yes. Patrick responded the same exact way. He could not accept my death. He spent years and years perfecting his craft in wizardry and tried everything in his power to bring me back to life. Resurrecting the dead? Is this for real? I mean, we're not talking about Frankenstein here. Frankenstein? That novel written about a hundred years ago? He was taking it very seriously. And he had found the key to actually make it happen. The immigrant document. Yes. With Ogden's assistance and the powers from ancient druids, he held a resurrection ceremony in this monastery. Uh, but something went wrong, didn't it? He only resurrected my physical body. As you can see, my soul is still doomed to roaming the universe forever separated from my body. And the terrifying thing is that my body was resurrected as a heartless monster. Monster. Although the monster may look like me, it is not me. Mr. O'Flaherty, please turn my body into ashes with your power. Ashes? But if I do that, we won't be able to bring you to life. 
Mr. O'Flaherty, I was robbed of my life by those thieves, and I could hate them as mortal enemies. Choose to think that my death was preordained by the Lord. Please, do not mourn my death. It was wrong for Patrick to try to resurrect me. To undo the work of God. Please, do not be sad. Death is at the heart of God's reasoning. I urge you to destroy my body. Its existence defies the wise providence of heaven. It mustn't exist in this world. Wait, Elaine! cruel world. I gave everything for your happiness and now what have I left with? I have no meaning in my life. Damn it! What have I been doing with my life? Elaine!